now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade J.J. Williams, and today we wrap up the Disney Plus original series, The Santa Clauses, and we discuss Chapter 6, A Christmas to Remember, starring Tim Allen, Elizabeth Mitchell, Austin Kane. Elizabeth Allen Dick, Matilda Lawler, Devin Bright, Rupali Red, Cal Penn, Isabella Bennett, Laura San Giacomo, Liam Kyle, and Ruby J. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, today we close out the Disney Plus original series, The Santa Clauses. And as our episode begins, we see Grace grabbing a snow globe 
that consists of a happy Christmas memory of her and her father, Simon Chosky. We then see La Bifana, the Christmas witch, in her cabin. A bell rings on her Christmas tree, alerting her that the Calvins have arrived back at the North Pole. She goes to grab the Santa coat out of her closet, but it is magically disappeared. Meanwhile, Cal, Carol, and Sandra head off to attempt to find Scott, who is locked up in a cell with the head of the ELFS department, Gary. When Grace tries to give her dad the snow globe, he yells at her and sends her away. With a little help from Noel, Cal, Carol, and Sandra eat through the bars of Scott's cell as they're made of black licorice. Meanwhile, Simon discovers the gigantic toy soldiers from the second film who have been locked in a room for 20 years. Now free from the cell, the Calvins and Noel search for the Santa suit. Sandra recruits Lewis, a mouse that she can speak with, while Cal gets the drone army to cease its hostilities, and Carol takes out the toy soldiers single-handedly. Both Scott and Simon come across the coat at the same time, when La Bafana enters the fray. Simon is able to get the coat and is about to burn it, but Grace interrupts. Scott asks Grace what she wants for Christmas, and she says for her dad to spend more time with her. Grace then shows her dad the snow globe, and he's reminded of the promise that he made to his wife before she passed to take care of Grace. Simon gives the coat back to Scott, who admits that all of this is his fault. He decided to step down when things started to get hard, instead of stepping up to the challenge. Once Scott realizes his mistake and confesses his desire to make amends, the snow globe resumes its brightness and all the elves who had disappeared return, all except for Betty. Noel emotionally searches through the elves to try to find her until they are finally reunited and embrace. Scott then puts the coat back on at the encouragement of his family and transforms back into Santa Claus. For the first time ever, Noel stays behind so that he can be with Betty, and instead, Scott takes his entire family with him to make his rounds. Scott makes his rounds with his family in the sleigh, and with Betty's approval, Cal makes the final delivery. Cal ends up coming down Riley's chimney, and he gives her the toy for her little brother, as promised, as well as a bouquet of poinsettias for her. On Christmas morning, all of the children around the world open their gifts and discover snow globes as their presents from Santa Claus, all of them showing their favorite Christmas memories, reminding us that we can't always get what we want, but sometimes we get what we need, as this season of the Santa Clauses comes to its end. I was definitely skeptical when it was first announced on Moss that the Santa Clauses was coming and going to be a TV series. I didn't really know what to think about it, even with Tim Allen and Elizabeth Mitchell back in the roles of Scott and Carol, respectively. Even with the announcement that David Krumholtz would return as Bernard. Even with the announcement that Eric Lloyd was coming back as Charlie. I wasn't really sure how I felt about this because at the end of the day, the original Santa Claus film was so good. It didn't need a sequel. And then it got the Santa Claus part two, which as you saw me discuss over the course of my reviews, and if you missed it, I'll link it up here. 
I felt was the weakest one in the saga. So the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause, almost had to be done just to right the wrong of the ship. And that one was better. Definitely got back more to form as the original. If you missed my review of the Santa Claus 3, I'll link it up here. But once it ended at the end of Santa Claus Part 3, again, I felt like there really needed to be no more. And then you start to get all the information about the series and how they're going to find a successor for Scott. You're like, okay. Well, it's got to be Charlie. That's the one that makes the most logical sense. And then we see Charlie in the second episode and he turns it down. He doesn't want it anymore. You're like, okay. Well, then it's got to be Buddy Claus. It's got to be Cal, right? And here comes this character of Simon Chosky. And I wouldn't say he's a villain. He's not innately evil. He's just very set in his mission. He's willing to do anything he can so that Grace is taken care of. Very much the same mindset that Anakin Skywalker has when he turns to the dark side of the force. He knows that Padme is about to die. He's having these visions of her death. And he's willing to do anything that he can to make sure that doesn't happen. Simon just wants to keep his promise to his wife that he will do everything he can to provide and take care of Grace. And as a result, he ends up going down this dark path. And it's not until this episode, about halfway through, where he's reminded of what he should be doing. And he comes back to the light. And we correct that mistake. He was never going to be a good Santa Claus. I mean, hell, he never even began the santification process by putting on the coat. Because on his first day, the coat disappeared. The coat knew he wasn't supposed to be Santa Claus. So it disappeared. So then we've got to we've got to right the ship. We've got to take down Simon Chosky and having the 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 toy soldiers from part two come back into play. Having Bernard come back. You know, and all the other little pieces of the puzzle, meeting all the Santas of old going all the way back to St. Nicholas himself and seeing Krampus and Papa Noel and the Santa who fell off of Scott's roof and getting all their little stories, their intricacies put throughout the movie and the series and the story. And it's, and now there's going to be a second season. And where do we go from here becomes the million-dollar question, I think. Because eventually, Scott needs to step down and let someone take over. We discover that both Sandra and Cal have magic abilities. Sandra is able to talk to animals, and Cal knows what gifts people want for Christmas. He can see the vortexes in the sky. Cal is now the most obvious choice to take on the mantle of Santa once Scott is ready to finish permanently. But he's still too young. He's still too goofy, too naive. We need need to strengthen his character a little bit more. So I'm sure that's going to come in the second season. I'm sure... This the series now is probably going to end up going about three or four seasons. And you figure the Disney Plus series is are only about six episodes. At 30 minutes each, that's three hours. That's one movie these days. Even if you trim out some of the filler to get it down to about two and a half, two hours. It's one movie's worth. But how do we get to this 
Endgame now? And will we get more appearances from other characters from the franchise as we progress? You know, we got Charlie. What about Lucy? What about Neil and Laura? What about Curtis? What about Mother Nature? What about Cupid? What about the Sandman or the Easter Bunny? It'd be nice to get some of these other characters to come back into things. You know? I'm genuinely invested in the series now, and I'm curious to see where it develops and goes from here. What did you guys think of the Santa Claus's first season series, the Disney Plus original? When it comes to me, I'm giving it four out of five stars. Because there's definitely filler in order to make it six episodes. If we trimmed two episodes out and made it a two-hour movie... I'd probably give this five stars. No joke. But there's definitely some filler material here that we could get rid of. Other than that, though, I think the concept, the storytelling, everything about it was fantastic. I was vested in the new characters in Noel and Betty. I was vested in Edie. And I was invested in Simon and Grace and seeing how their story would turn out. Disney did a wonderful job. Four out of five stars for me. What did you guys think about the Santa Clauses? Let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. And it's how that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys tune in tomorrow right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And I'll be wrapping up my sensational, inspirational, celebrational, Muppetational content with It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie starring David Arquette, Steve Whitmire, Joan Cusack, Whoopi Goldberg, Dave Goles, Bill Beretta, Eric Jacobson, Matthew Lillard, William H. Macy, Mel Brooks, Brian Henson, Kevin Clash, Zach Braff, and Carson Daly. You don't want to miss out on that. Right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, on Renegades Reviews, Muppet content as we wind up the month in the year. It's a very merry Muppet Christmas movie, essentially the Muppets take on It's a Wonderful Life. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell gets turned on so you don't miss out any time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or anytime we go live, as is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, Pay-Per-View PLE coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life, fans of Tim Allen, fans of Cal Penn, fans of the Santa Claus franchise, Fans of the mythology of Santa Claus. Anybody you can think of that would enjoy my content in this video, share it with them. It's the only way we're going to boost my visibility in YouTube's algorithms so I can eventually get monetized, make some money off this channel. Thank you to everyone who joined me and tuned in today. It means more to me than you'll ever know. And I will see you guys next time.